to understand stochastic processes, let's start with a very simple example. Let's say that we have an infinite staircase, which I'm drawing over here. And let's number it 1, 2, 3, etc. And let's say there's a person standing on step 3. And we're going to add a clock which ticks once in a while, once in a minute, once a second, something like that. And we're going to have a table which keeps track of where the man is, where the person is. So, and let's say at time three, the person is at step three. And the rule is that every time the clock ticks, the person goes to the next step. They go to, and that they take zero time to do that. So we can ask the question, where would the person be at time four? Well, they'll be at step four. And time five is step five, etc. And if you ask at time 20, they'll be at step 20. And even if you go quite far into the future, let's say one million, the answer is they'll be at step one million. So for such a process, the process of person climbing the staircase, the future is completely known and we call this deterministic. We know exactly where the person is going to be for the future, for the infinite future. Now with a little bit of change, we can completely change the prop problem. So let's consider a slightly different problem. We still have the staircase, we still have the person on step three, but what we're going to do is we're going to give them a coin, which can be either heads or tails, and it can be heads with probability 0 0.5 or tails with probability 0 0.5. And we're going to add a rule, and the rule is that if the, he if the uh, coin comes up heads, then they'll go up by one staircase. If it comes up tails, they'll go down by one step. So uh, let's say we try to draw the same table again. So it's time, and this is step. And at time three, they're at step three, and we want to know where they will be at time four. The answer is we don't quite know exactly where they're going to be, and the reason is because it's uh, there's a coin flip involved. So. What will happen? Well, if the coin comes up heads, they're going to go up to four. If it comes down tails, it's going to go down to two. So at time four, we can say that the person is on step two with probability 0 0.5 and on step four with probability 0 0.5. And so instead of having a deterministic value such as four, we have a distribution of values, which I can show over here. So on the x-axis, what I'm showing is the values that are present. So 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. On the y-axis is the probability of being at that value. And what we say is that at time 4, they're going to be at probability 0 0.5, and probability 0 0.5, and on step 4, probability 0 0.5. And this is a distribution of two values. Uh, discrete distribution which corresponds to time step 4. Now let's say we move one more step ahead to time 5. What's going to happen? Well let's go back to this figure over here. When they're at step 4 they can go up again with probability 0.5 or they can come back down from 4 to 3 and when they're at 2 they can go down to 1 or they can come up to 3. So the probability of being at step five is 0.5 going up and 0.5 going up again, that's 0.25, and symmetrically the probability of being at step one is 0.5 multiplied by 0.5, 0.25, and the remainder of the probability is at three, which is going to be 0.5. So we have probability of being at one with probability 0.25, of being at three with probability 0 0.5, and a probability of being five, uh, sorry, of being at stair 5 with probability 0.25 and that gives us a distribution 
like this, where we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc., the values, and the probability p, and here we have 0.25 of being here, 0.5 of being here, and then 0.25 of being over here. What happens if you're at time 20? <coughs> well, there'll be some kind of a distribution here, which you could work out by going through the steps from 5 to 6, 6 to 7, etc. And if you were to draw it, it would be some kind of a discrete distribution. Presumably, it'll be something symmetric and go on. <coughs> uh, of course, we can't go below 1, so there's sort of a bottom over here, so that introduces some, some funny uh, probability mass movement. But ignoring that, we have some kind of distribution of behavior 1, 2, 3, etc. And if you go to 1 million, then again we have some kind of distribution and we have similarly some kind of distribution we can draw it over here. Uh, again, I'm not going to draw it out. So the uh, it becomes clear here that when we have a toyn cost which introduces element of probability, as you go into the future, the future is not known precisely. Just like we have a probability of the weather taking on a value rainy or not rainy for the future, in the same way, the probability of being in any particular step is not known. Uh, the probability is known, but the actual value taken is not known. So what we have instead is a series of distributions, the distribution at time four, distribution at time five, distribution at time six, etc., all the way up. So what we end up having is a family of distributions. And this family of distributions is indexed. It's indexed by time. And so this is then the mathematical definition of a stochastic process. A stochastic process is nothing more than a family of distributions for some random variable, which is of course implicit over here, which is indexed by time. And this allows us to be very clear about what it means to say that we, knew the f we know the future, but only approximately. What we mean is that for a random variable that describes a stochastic process, the future is known, but only in terms of the probabilities that the random variable will take at the future point in time.